Because remember, the computers are now doing self-improvement. They're learning how to plan, and they don't have to listen to us anymore. We call that superintelligence, or ASI, artificial superintelligence. And this is the theory that there will be computers that are smarter than the sum of humans. So that was former Google CEO Dr. Eric Schmidt speaking at the Special Competitive Studies Project. He was chatting with Jan Meserve about where AI and biotech are headed. And honestly, the conversation is packed with mind-blowing insights. So let's break it down, because what he said has some serious implications for our future. Okay, so we believe as an industry that in the next one year, the vast majority of programmers will be replaced by AI programmers. We also believe that within one year, you will have graduate level mathematicians that are at the tippy top of graduate math programs. There's lots of reasons to think this is gonna happen. This is the consensus. You go, okay, well that's pretty interesting. Now, I can't do that kind of math. Very few people can do that math. How can the computer do that math better than anybody else? To some degree, it's because math has a simpler language than human language. So the way these algorithms actually work is they're doing essentially word prediction. So you take, you take a, pe a sentence, you take a word out, and then it learns how to put the correct word back in. This is called the loss function. And it's optimized to do that at a scale that's in, in, unimaginable to us as humans. So you do the same thing for math. But there you use a conjecture and then a proof format through a protocol called lean. In programming, it's pretty simple. You just keep writing code until you pass the programming test. So strangely, the first question I always ask programmers is what language do you program in? And the correct answer is it doesn't matter because you're trying to design for an outcome. You don't care what code is generated by the computer. This is a whole new world, okay? So that's one year, okay? What happens in two years? Well, I've just told you about reasoning and I've told you about programming and I've told you about math. Programming plus math are the basis of sort of our whole digital world. So the evidence and the claims from the research groups in OpenAI and, and, and Tropic and so forth is that they're now somewhere around 10 or 20% of the code that they're developing in their research programs is being generated by the computer. The vast majority of programmers will be replaced by AI. That's the big worry. Does better AI assistance mean fewer developers are needed? Or does it make existing developers super productive, leading to more software overall? Historically, better tools often expanded the field, but the potential efficiency gain here feels unprecedented. If one AI-assisted developer can do the work of 10, what happens to the other nine? It's a critical question with no easy answer. We'll have what is called general intelligence, AGI, which can be defined as a system that is as smart as the smartest mathematician, physicist, you know, our artist, writer, thinker, politician, maybe not in the same level, um, but you get the idea. Uh, just the creative industries and so forth, but imagine that in one computer. Okay, well, that's pretty interesting. I call this, by the way, the San Francisco consensus because everyone who believes this is in San Francisco. <laughs> it may be the water. What happens when every single one of us has the equivalent of the smartest human on every problem in our pocket? So it means you have the best architect when you have an architecture problem. Another thing that's going on is the development of agentic solutions. And agents are referred to systems that have input and output in memory, and they learn. An example here is that I want to uh, buy another house. Uh, I happen to like Virginia. I grew up in Virginia. I say, find me a house in the greater McLean area. Look at the, that's one agent. Look at all the rules, figure out how big a house I can build. That's another agent. Do the transaction to buy the land, that's another agent. Design the house with a human architect, right? But sort of ignore them for most of the thing, but they have to sign it off. And then I approve it, and then find the contractor, right? Hire the contractor, pay the bills, and then at the end, sue the contractor for lack of performance. <laughs> okay? Now, I just gave you the stupidest possible explanation. I just described every business process, every government process, and every, and every sort of academic process in our nation. So it isn't just the programmers that are gonna be out of work. We're all gonna be out of work. No, that's not a consequence, I'll come to that. But, but the reason I wanna, I wanna make the point here is that in the next year or two, this foundation is being locked in, and it's not, we're not gonna stop it. 
gets much more interesting after that. Because remember, the computers are now doing self-improvement. They're learning how to plan, and they don't have to listen to us anymore. We call that superintelligence, or ASI, artificial superintelligence. And this is the theory that there will be computers that are smarter than the sum of humans. The San Francisco consensus is this occurs within six years, just based on scaling. Now, in order to pull this off, you have to have an enormous amount of power. I was here yesterday testifying about this, you know, and we need, like, I can talk at some length about how many gigawatts and how many nuclear power plants and all the kind of stuff we can talk about separately. This path is not understood in our society. There's no language for what happens with the arrival of this. I wrote a book on this with Henry Kissinger called Genesis, which you know I recommend, obviously, because um, I wrote available. it. Uh, available. <laughs> available in your usual places. Um, but the important point is, this is happening faster than our human, that our, our society, our democracy, our laws will address. And there's lots of implications. That's why it's underhyped. People do not understand what happens when you have intelligence at this level, which is largely free. So Schmidt's underhyped comment seems nuts at first glance. AI is everywhere. And yeah, maybe some current applications are oversold. Today's chatbots still make mistakes, image generators can be weird, and the marketing often outpaces reality. If you're just looking at today's tools, overhyped might feel right. But Schmidt and others thinking like him are looking at the potential trajectory. They're thinking about artificial general intelligence, AI with human-like learning and reasoning, or even super intelligence, something far beyond human capability. Their argument is basically this. Even if you think the chance of AGI or ASI happening soon is small, the impact, if it does happen, would be so astronomically huge, so world-changing, that we're not taking the possibility seriously enough. Deep seek moment is equivalent to our chat GPT moment. I was there with Henry, um, and this is what happens when you're talking to, to the Chinese about AI with Henry. And this means we are alive and we're listening to you. Thank you very much. Right? That's not what they're doing anymore. When, the, when DeepSeek showed up and our stock market lost a trillion dollars in one day, all of a sudden they began to understand the scale of what it was. So now there is a massive program in China to accelerate these things. I had thought Illy and I and some of the other people in this room worked really hard on these um, chip c controls. And the chip controls have been, um, in my view, largely effective. How did China get around them? Well, some of it was straightforward theft and evasion of the tariffs, but they also, they're sufficiently smart, they created new algorithms that use different kinds of computing to move forward. Because, they, because China operates in open source, that is, they, they release the software to everyone, there are two things that happen. We, we Americans immediately saw their idea and incorporated it in our own, so thank you very much, China, you invented something new, we immediately incorporated it. But second, because it's free, the proliferation issues around Chinese models have now become a very big deal. And our government is trying to figure out, uh, without success so far, how to handle this question. It's a very tricky question. And this is what I'm really worried about. Um, let's imagine, um, so we'll use, you're the good person, you're the, the, the good, good lady and I'm the bad guy. I like that. Okay, and the good lady, the United States in this case, is ahead, and you've done everything right. I'm the bad guy, China or whatever, and I'm six months, 12 months behind. As you get closer to super intelligence, right, I get more and more worried unless I'm gonna be there the same as you. And you sit there and you go, ah, oh, what's he complaining about? You know, we, it took four years for the, um, the atomic bomb to be recreated in, in the Soviet Union. During that four years, we had a monopoly, but it was rel fairly quickly uh, eliminated. These are network effect businesses. And so network effect businesses have the property that the leader tends to get 90% share. So in the scenario where you, the good lady, are doing this, of course, we would all applaud you as Americans, you're likely to get 90% share or more of intelligence in the world. Okay? That would be terrible for me. Right. What would I do? Try to undermine me. Okay, let me tell you how I would start, just to give you a heads up. The first thing I would do 
is to try to steal your intellectual property and the people. Check. Okay. And <laughs> you're such a good lady that you've managed to prevent me from doing that. The next thing I'm going to do is use my AI, which is almost as good as yours, to go into your eye, these are called adversarial attacks, and modify your system. Check. And you go, no way, because we have such great cryptologists. We're so far ahead of you at that six months we anticipated this. What's my next move? I bomb your data center. But, but think about it. We're having this whole debate in our nation about what to do about Iran's nuclear program, and I'm not an expert in that. But these are the kind of conversations that happen here in, in DC. So when we get to the point where China is N months ahead, are we willing to bomb their data centers? My Schmidt strongly emphasized the geopolitical angle, especially China, 1028. He warned that China is incredibly serious about AI and the US needs to keep pace. The deep seek moment showed China's rapid progress, particularly in areas like AI for coding. This isn't just about business competition. Leadership in AI could confer massive economic, technological, and military advantages. It's seen as a foundational technology for the 21st century. China has made it a national priority, leveraging data and state investment. The U.S. leads in frontier research via companies like Google, OpenAI, etc., but the competition is fierce. This creates an AI arms race dynamic with complex risks. Will competition spur innovation or lead to dangerous military applications? Will it hinder global cooperation on crucial AI safety research? Schmidt's message is clear. This is a matter of national importance requiring strategic focus and investment. This isn't sci-fi. AI like DeepMind's AlphaFold is already solving biological puzzles. AI can analyze massive data sets and design novel molecules far faster than humans. The potential to accelerate the slow, expensive drug discovery process is immense. Think faster cures for cancer, Alzheimer's, or future pandemics. While there are still hurdles, AI offers a profound hope for improving human health and tackling major scientific challenges. This potential upside is a huge part of why AI development is being pushed so hard. So pulling it all together, the picture Eric Schmidt and others paint is one of transformative change driven by AI. We've got the argument that its true potential is perhaps underhyped, despite the noise. We see AI poised to revolutionize coding, raising big questions about programmer jobs and potentially many other white collar roles. The whole, is this time different? Debate fueled further by the rise of autonomous AI agents. We also see the high stakes geopolitical race with nations vying for AI supremacy. And alongside all the anxieties, there's the incredible promise of AI tackling huge problems like discovering cures for diseases. Thanks for tuning in. If this discussion resonated, hit that like button, subscribe for more analysis, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay curious.